Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. Today I'm looking at another monitor firmware update, this time for the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQDM. A couple of weeks ago, ASUS released firmware version MCM104 for this display, promising optimized HDR color accuracy and a 30% color saturation improvement, whatever that means. Now this firmware update came as a bit of a surprise to me, as honestly, the PG27 AQDM performed pretty well with the previous firmware, MCM103, that we tested in our review. This isn't a situation like the Alienware AW3423DWF, where a firmware update is needed to fix deal breaker issues. But of course, I welcome any improvements to products that make them even better than they were before. This update is pretty easy to install. All you need is to connect the monitor to your PC via a USB cable, download the firmware executable file from ASUS's website under the support section, then run the utility to update the firmware. It didn't take very long to update, under 10 minutes, which I think is a bit faster than the previous update, but overall a very smooth process. From here it was a matter of figuring out what ASUS has improved. And to save a whole lengthy, boring part of this video, the main focus appears to be HDR performance, which I guess was expected given the brief patch notes ASUS published. In short, firmware MCM104 produces more accurate HDR performance, both in terms of EOTF tracking and color delta E's, which ultimately makes this a better product for HDR gaming. So let's take a look at what has improved. In our initial testing of the PG27 AQDM with firmware MCM103, I found that EOTF tracking was good, but not perfect with some wonkiness in the lower parts of the curve. This was tested using a 10% window in the more accurate 6500K color temperature mode. Especially when we focused in on dark tracking, the AQDM was typically a bit dimmer than it should have been for this area of the tracking chart, meaning shadow detail was a bit too dark. This has been improved quite a bit with firmware MCM104. Using a 10% window, the 6500K mode, and also the ASUS console HDR mode, which I found to perform the best, the AQDM now has essentially perfect EOTF tracking. There isn't much of a roll off here as soon as we hit that 920 nit mark, it flatlines. However, the other HDR modes aren't quite as aggressive as this one with roll off, so if you'd like a slightly more gradual approach to roll off, then the gaming or cinema HDR modes will be for you. All three modes have improved EOTF tracking though relative to the previous firmware update, and all have solved the dark tracking issue I was just talking about. You can see here that the updated firmware gets pretty close to producing dead accurate values in the sub 1 nit range, which is excellent performance and should now produce accurate shadows while gaming or watching HDR videos. Along with EOTF tracking, color performance has improved with this new firmware update. Let's work through our saturation tracking graphs to see the changes. Previously, for Rec 2020 tracking, the AQDM produced a rather high delta E average of 27.3. That has been improved to a delta E average of 12.2 with the latest firmware update. When looking at P3 tracking, we see an improvement from a delta E average of 21.7 previously to 6.1 post firmware update. Rec 709 tracking has improved from 19.9 .9 to 6.0, so across all three saturation charts we see a big improvement to Delta E's, which ultimately delivers more accurate colours when using the HDR mode. Now you might be looking at the CIE 1976 chart on the right and thinking, well, this doesn't actually look that different between firmware 103 and 104, so what is causing such a large delta E discrepancy? And that's certainly true. When we look closely at the P3 chart, for example, it doesn't look that different, not enough to cause that sort of change. The measured chrominance values, the dots in the chart, have only shifted somewhat between firmware updates, and it's not a case where all of these measured values are sitting perfectly within the target value area, shown as the white squares. There has been an improvement, just not a big one. What has improved a lot though are the luminance values when measuring saturation, and this is where reading these charts can be a bit tricky. The CIE 1976 chart, as we show in our reviews, only really describes chrominance, the color value, and how accurate that is. There's also effectively a z-axis to this chart that isn't shown, which is for the luminance or brightness component to the color. 
After all, the colour we perceive is a combination of both the chrominance and luminance characteristics. Two colours of differing brightness will look different to us, so it does make sense that this is accounted for. Anyway, it's this luminance component that is contributing more heavily to the Delta E improvements between AQDM firmware updates. Colour reproduction is brighter post-update, which I suspect is what ASUS were referring to when saying this firmware brought a 30% colour saturation improvement. The easiest way to see this is via a gamut luminance chart. With the previous firmware, most colors were down around minus 30 in luminance relative to the correct value, while after the update, most colors are in the accurate range for gamut luminance. So I think this is where ASUS gets the 30% improvement figure from. If this is all very confusing to you, and it might be, reading these color charts is not a simple task with that experience, all you need to know is the firmware update improves the brightness of colors, bringing them up to a more accurate level. This is in addition to ASUS improving EOTF tracking, which tells us whether brightness levels are accurate in the grayscale. Both of these improvements make the PG27 AQDM a better and more accurate product, specifically for HDR. What's good to see is that these improvements have been made without sacrificing other areas to performance. Accuracy is improved without impacting maximum brightness, so this panel is still capable of around 930 nits peak post-update in the HDR mode. I also didn't see any major impact to SDR performance, which was decent to begin with, especially after a few OSD tweaks. This makes it an easy recommendation to install the firmware update for improved performance. There's not much else to say here about the PG27 AQDM and its MCM104 firmware update, so this is probably going to be a short video. This update doesn't change my monitor recommendations substantially because I was already recommending this display as the best 427-inch 1440p 240Hz gaming. It's still a much brighter monitor than the LG equivalent, which is the main reason I recommend it. It's just now more accurate as well, addressing some small concerns around HDR accuracy that I mentioned in my review. I also think it's important to praise ASUS for continuing to improve their monitors through firmware updates and not just moving on to the next product. When I'm buying a premium $1,000 US display, I expect the best hardware, the best performance and top tier support. Addressing concerns via firmware updates is part of that package and it once again proves that all monitors should have user accessible firmware updates. You never know what needs fixing or improving, so having this capability is essential, especially for high-end monitors with newer capabilities like HDR. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you do appreciate our sort of brief looks at firmware updates for products like this particular ASUS monitor, then please do consider supporting the channel. That's easy to do just by subscribing, giving the video a like, and letting us know what you think of these sorts of videos in the comments below. In the description below, we also have links to our Patreon and Floatplan account. So if you want to support the channel directly and in our independent testing, then that is the best place to do it. But I guess that's pretty much it for this one. I've got a few more firmware related things to check out, so I should probably get onto that. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.